Hello HP Touchpad users, great news! Android 4.4 KitKat has arrived for testing on the HP Touchpad. It's brought to us by Flintman of the Evervolve team. Always evolve, ever evolve! Evervolve is an Android open source project ROM. They're fully open source and encourage no restrictions. Check it out here in the XDA Developers Forum. Now this is a testing build. We can take it for a little test drive, check it out. It's fun to play around with, uh, but it's not quite ready to be your daily driver yet. That being said, as long as you have an Android backup, we'll show you how to install it and you can check it out for yourself. Let's talk about the release notes. Now there is no Bluetooth in this build whatsoever. Reboot to recovery and webOS is not currently working. You'll need to reboot the device and select the desired OS from the Mooboot menu. Now there has been reports of data loss from the SD card. Now this may be fixed now, but what was happening is files that the user added on, like folders you created or files you transferred to the device were disappearing. Things that were in the appropriate files, like downloads, music, videos, and things like that, were unaffected. So just make sure you're backed up. This may again be fixed now. Now only certain browsers are working, people were saying stock browsers weren't working, but Chrome and Firefox work just fine. I was also having problems with the Dolphin browser. Now the camera is now fixed in this latest build. To launch it, you can touch the upper right corner and launch it from the gallery. Previously some video playback didn't work, but that appears to all have been fixed and everything's playing in this build, HD videos, YouTube, and everything and art apparently isn't working. And now this is apparently going to be the Android runtime and this gives us advantages to KitKat for performance. Apparently this isn't implemented yet in this build. Here you can find additional information about this build and the Evervolve team. Right here is the download link to the latest test build. Now there isn't a link for the gapps right now but I actually posted it on the second page. Now I got this linked from Flintman earlier in his other thread and just added this over here, right here. I have additional information and notes about this build. Here is my full how to install Android 4.2, 4.3 and now 4.4 builds on the HP touchpad. Due to the increasing size of the ROMs we need a larger system partition. We no longer recommend installing these with the Acme Installer 3. We first recommend increasing the size of your system partition with either a flashable zip or using the Taylor app from Preware in WebOS. Now we recommend doing a clean install via these instructions here. We don't recommend doing the dirty flash via these instructions here, but if you're using an Evervolve ROM already you may wish to try it, just make sure you're fully backed up first. There's a full definition for all of these terms here by MP Grimm 2 big thanks to him. Further down the page, I have all the information and links to this fantastic test build by Flintman and the GApps package. Now here's my notes about this build. Now there is a great low to medium battery drain, as low as minus 4, which is in line with all the best builds out there, but there's a little more spiking than usual. But this is a test build of course, so please make a backup. One of the great features of the Evervolve ROMs is an automated updater and installer. This will notify you when updates are available and allow you to automatically flash them through Clockwork Mod or Twerp Recovery. You can check it out from the settings menu. The audio plays with the screen off. The camera is currently working, uh, but there's no Bluetooth. Now another note for users is to transfer files from the device to the PC you'll need to enable mass storage from a notification that's going to pop up once you plug in that USB cable. So you'll need to click the notification and select OK on. Now the SD card issue does appear to be fixed in newer builds, but just to be safe make sure you have a backup and all your important documents and data backed up on your computer as well. I'd highly recommend increasing the size of the system partition for this and future builds. I've got full information and guides on how to do that right here. And finally, this is an Android open source project ROM, not a CyanogenMod mod ROM. So don't dirty flash this over a CyanogenMod mod ROM and vice versa. We always want to do a clean install when going from one version to the other. Now here's a little news and updates for you. I recently put out a video talking about a new Acme installer 4 and 5 put together for us by iMark90. Check it out here in the Rootswiki forum. 
Now these are based on the great work of the developer Green. And iMark90 has modified these to increase the size of the system partition. There's a 500 and a 600 megabyte version, respectively the 4 and 5 version. To install these, you do it the normal way. And instead of saying Acme Installer 3, you say Acme Installer 4 or 5 and enter the command. In addition, he has newer versions of Twerp and Clockwork Mod. Now these are flashable zips that we can download and install through recovery. So get the latest versions here and test them out. And we're trying to get people to leave a little feedback here on whether or not these worked for them. Because we want to officially use these in our packages, but we need to test them first. So please leave a little feedback. In addition, he's got new Acme installers that work with Twerp and Evervolve. You simply need to download the correct version and the command will just add an extra 4E or 5E at the end when you're inputting it. Check these out here, leave a little feedback, tell us what you think, and help with the development. Now I'm going to show you how to do the clean install process for this ROM. I should note that if you already have an Evervolve Nandroid backup, you could do an advanced restore of the data partition after doing this method to reclaim your data and apps. Now the first thing you'll need to do is reboot your device into recovery. You'll do this by holding down the power button and bringing up the menu. You can select reboot and go directly into recovery. You can also do a regular reboot in which you'll have five seconds to select recovery clockwork mod from the list and boot into it. Let's go there now. Here we are in Clockwork Mod Recovery. Now the very first thing I recommend doing is making a Nandroid backup. This is a full image of everything on your Android device. All the apps you have installed, the setup of your desktop and launcher, everything Android related. This won't back up the media on your SD card per se, like music and videos, but everything Android related will be backed up. You'll restore it to that day and it'll be exactly the way you left it. In order to do this, we go down to Backup and Restore, Select it with the home button. Now the very first option at the top is backup. Once you select this, this can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to make a complete backup. Make sure you have a good charge when you're doing this. You don't want to run out of batteries while this is happening. Once you've made that backup, you can simply restore it by coming back here and going to restore. In this list here, you can see all the different backups I have made. Now anytime I want to upgrade a ROM, I usually flash back to CyanogenMod 9 or 10. This gives me a safe starting point when I want to flash a new ROM and yet keep my old setup. I wouldn't recommend doing this with newer Android 4.2 and Android 4.3 ROMs. Now you can restore this at any point by simply selecting one and it'll go right back to the way you left it. Now we're all backed up. Let's talk about doing that fresh install. Now this is a little different than normal. It's gonna still leave Mooboot and it's still gonna leave Clockwork Mod on the device. We're simply gonna delete all the data that has to do with the ROM. First off, go down to Wipe Data and Factory Reset. This will not wipe the data on the SD card, just everything Android related. Once this is complete, go down to Wipe Cache Partition and select Yes. We're now completely uninstalled. All that data has been wiped. We're ready to do a fresh install with our ROM and GApps package. Now we simply go down to install zip from SD card and choose our ROM. Choose zip from SD card. I'm using the latest Evervolve nightly ROM with Android 4.3. Now that our ROM's installed, we'll just need to flash our GApps package, choose zip from SD card, Scroll down to the appropriate GApps package and install it. Now that our ROM and GApps package have been installed successfully, we're ready to reboot and try out our new version of Android. Simply go back and select Reboot System Now. This will start us up just as if we freshly installed the ROM. Uh, none of our other data and information will be saved. We'll need to set everything up again. We'll need to log into the Google Play Store and all that stuff. So this is like doing a fresh install without quite all the steps. Now I would highly recommend doing this for newer versions of Android 4.2, 4.3 and up. Please subscribe to see the latest updates with the HP Touchpad and Android. Thanks for watching everybody.